because I already know all of this, but maybe you don't. So um, yeah, let's just start and see what we, we find out. So anyone here, I hope, knows that LibreOffice is, oh, this is wrong, it's not big, it's huge. Everything takes ages. If you want to find something, you need to look in all places. Building takes a lot of time. You need a lot of disk space and so on. And even though watching build go on and on can be fun for a while, maybe you should be doing something useful. And uh, I'm going to give you some tips on how to spend less time just watching build go on and uh, so have more time left for actually useful work. So building LibreOffice takes a long time. So what can you do about it? You can make the build make faster somehow. Or you can make or you can build less of the stuff. Or you can, that's another useful, build it when it when you are, when you don't need to wait for it. So the easiest solution is if your machine is not fast enough for building, you get a faster one. Um, that's a very fast one, just use those money thingies and it's suddenly magically faster and you don't need to do anything. And this is actually not a joke, it worked for me. But yeah, um, pretty much any other solution is going to be more complicated than this, but also cheaper. So um, if you don't have one fast machine, you can kind of build a big fast machine, machine out of several slower ones. You can run a distributed build. Uh, this basically works by your local machine uh, preparing all compilations and sending them to another computers. If you, if you work in a company where you have colleagues, those colleagues have also computers which are probably not busy all the time. If you are at, I don't know, college, maybe your roommate has a computer, maybe you have this old machine which you put away when you bought the faster one, and so on. And the tool for this is Ice Cream. We have a switch enable Ice Cream which should enable it automatically. And um, yeah, basically, uh, you just run a parallel build and um, yeah, basically the number is just some, if you run minus J100, that's okay, it, it will not uh, overload the system, there is a central scheduler which is rather intelligent where, where to send the jobs, so for example when I worked at SUSE, I of course installed ice cream on many computers of my colleagues and some of them were like but it will make my computer slower if you run builds on my machine and uh, I was like no 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 you won't even notice and in fact like I don't know maybe two years after I installed the stuff one of the colleagues came to me and I was like so you installed this ice cream thingy on my machine too and I was like yeah uh, what's the problem and the problem actually wasn't that it was like making this colleague's work slower, but he started using, using a CPU usage indicator, which was kind of a duck floating on water. And when it was, was idle, the dog was just happily doing nothing. And when the CPUs were busy, the water started to boil. And the duck was starting to have a hard time. And the <coughs> indicator uh, counted complete CPU usage. So ice cream runs with nice priority. But whenever I started a build, the duck was just having, having a really hard time. And the colleague was doing absolutely nothing with the machine. And he, he said it took him like a month to figure out what was causing it. <laughs> so you probably don't even need to ask your roommates, colleagues, or whatever. Just install it, and they probably won't even notice. Yeah, but it's nicer to ask. So, uh, if you use ice cream, the other one which gets often mentioned is Ccache, which basically works 
uh, if you run a compilation, it remembers exactly all the input for the compilation and caches the result. And the important word is exactly. If you change the source file only a tiny bit, if you switch the options, uh, you need to build a new. So um, basically the problem is if it's exactly the same compilation, why would you need to repeat it? So um, basically I, 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 I'm of the opinion that it doesn't matter for normal usage and there are only two cases where it matters. If you run clean rebuilds, some people like to start like every every morning or every Monday or whatever with a completely clean build of LibreOffice so that it helps because uh, many of the files which you need to compile they haven't changed and the other one is if you bisect because for example you uh, if I mean if you bisect you, you uh, do binary search by binary division and there may be a commit which changes some header file in some basic library. So basically, if you would, you would, need, you would do a jump, uh, a step, and it would go over the commit and force a compilation of everything. And it would say, no, this is already too new, so let's jump back. And you would again skip over the commit, so you again have a change in the file. And with Ccache, you would just have builds before and after, and it would remember them. But, uh, I mean, Ccache has, like, depends on the machine, but it has at least, like, uh, at least 10% overhead, so you would need to have at least 1 in 10 cache hit, which is actually not very likely during normal usage. And since I mentioned bisecting, you don't actually need to often bisect at all. Uh, I mean, even just one build takes ages, so it's better to go to the wiki page, download a rather large archive which has builds uh, like 100 commits apart or so, and if you want to find where some, something broke, broke, you will use by step over already the build binaries. You don't need to build it yourself. This is actually pretty useful because you could spend like days on bisecting manually something and this way you, you will have it like in half an hour well if you don't count the download which is really big but you do that, you do that only once uh, so uh, these things I mentioned they were like quite easy to use and if you want we will get to more and more hackish solutions or more manually demanding so uh, you start building by just typing make and you can, you can say what, what to build. So normally maybe if you run just make, even if you have changed just one file, it will also run some checks and so on. So actually what I myself use is that I use make build no check, which is just a couple of seconds if you have only changed one of the files and it skips the test. I'm actually not sure why it's not the default for some uh, apparently whoever created it believes that if we are forced to run some of the checks for every single rebel that it helps but yeah well I just run build no check all the time also if you are in interested for example only in right writer you can just rebuild the SW module or for example, you can run only checks in the in the write module, or you can even rebuild one gbuild tar target. This is this is basically the name of the .mk file. So you can you can run as you can just build a specific library, or you can run a specific um, a unit test and. Yeah, you, can, you can be basically rather picky about what gets rebuilt if you know how to say what you only want to rebuild. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, as I mentioned, make 4.0 is a bit faster, so that also helps. 
Another problem we have is we have one central repository and whenever you make a commit it goes to this one central repository and so that we don't have any match commits we need to replace whenever somebody else um, commits which so and whenever you rebase your local sources will update and it's quite possible that I might have just in the meantime fixed a comment in string.hxx and just because you want to push one your tiny little change you will need to rebuild everything so uh, and maybe it's a uh, Maybe you have broken build and you, you need to push quickly. You cannot wait until evening. So how will how will you push it? One of the options, this is actually what I use, you will use git format patch, which will create patch files from all your commits you have locally, which have not been pushed yet. And you will have another git clone checkout. And you will apply the commits there, you will replace there and push there. Or you can have uh, something which is described in detail in Microsoft's blog. You will use clone with reference. And you will also use another uh, checkout which will refer to your working checkout. And the commits in your working checkout, you can again rebase in the other one. And you can cherry pick your commits and push them from there. So uh, you, will, you will do this without any changes in the, in the, in the checkout where you actually work. Uh, yeah. So how many people here build LibreOffice and do not use enable dbg util? Ah, shame on you. <laughs> yeah, sure. But you can be excused, for example, by the fact that uh, debug info for LibreOffice as with everything is huge. So it takes a lot of time and also it takes time to just write it to the disk. So uh, one of the things is we have a configure option which will let you skip some of them. For example, if I uh, work mainly on the writer, I'm not really interested in debug info for CAL or IMPRESS, which is actually quite big, so I can use the option to, to avoid it. And um, it, it can save gigabyte of disk space or so. It's quite a lot. And another thing which helps, again, um, whenever you build, you create a .o object file from, from the source file and the headers and so on. And you, and you add all the information about debug to this object file. And when you create the shared library, you take all these .o files and merge them into one .so file, the shared library. And with, since again, everything is huge, it's a lot of disk space, and it takes, it can take a, a number of seconds just to read it and write it. And uh, a recent GCC or, or client support option split dwarf, which will put some of this file in the separated .dwo files. And these files will not be used when linking. So the SO file will be smaller. This again saves some some uh, disk operations and disk space, so it's faster. Uh, it's rather new, so for example, this is not officially supported by Ice Cream or Ccash yet. There are patches for this, and yeah, I, 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 have, I have a patch for Ice Cream in the works for like half a year because it also needs a compiler support or ugly hex, yeah, whatever. But, uh, Eventually, um, and you, you, you can you can only well right now we don't have any support in LibreOffice either, but you can try it manually. Um, 
This is even more manual, even more hackish. Uh, if you're a, if you're on a normal normal build, you either build for with optimizations or you build with debugging for. And optimizations take additional CPU time because the compiler is well, thinking about uh, you know what optimizations it can do and does all the calculations and whatever. And debugging for, on the other hand, it, uh, increase this usage and I/O operations. But sometimes you are, for example, just interested, does it build? And you don't need all the optimizations. So you can explicitly use uh, compile flux to turn both of these on. And of course, after that, it will be slow and you won't be able to debug it. But if you are, for, exa for example, as I said, only checking if it builds or you are just bisecting in case, you, in case the uh, by bisect doesn't work, it just works. And it saves a little time. Um, yeah, another change, another thing. Um, I, I already mentioned that if somebody changes, for example, a header file in some basic library like the string class, it may be just a change in a comment, but make works by uh, comparing timestamps of the files. So the file gets newer, and if you run make, it will see, oh, this very basic file has changed, and everything depends on the file. So yeah, I'm going to rebuild everything because I changed a comment, which doesn't change anything at all. At all. So in case uh, you change some very basic file and you know that your change has no practical implications with, which would require a, a rebuild, you can uh, change the timestamp back, for example. I actually have a script for this. It means change the timestamp of the file for the, to the January 1st of 2001. So the file will be very old and make will think, will think it's okay. So I actually use this quite a lot. Um, yeah, even more hackish for the about thousand time. LibreOffice is huge, so building everything takes a lot of time. And for example, if you are just checking a change in, in a basic library and you know it affects only writer, maybe you don't want to rebuild calc all the time. So what I once found out is that if you move the directory away and edit, edit uh, remove it also from the mentioned file, and you, you can just run make and it will not, it's not there, it will not be built. Uh, there are some directories like there is um, the post the post process module which requires it to be built. So it's necessary it's built at least once, otherwise some of the files may be missing, which other modules require. But if you are for, for example bisecting, you can just move it away, run the build, put it back, do another bisect step and so on. Hmm. Still, sometimes you cannot really work with a LibreOffice checkout, which is one month old. You will get a number of match problems and so on. Sometimes you do have to build. So it's not usually, usually not a good time to do it in the middle of your workday, because that means you won't be doing anything for the rest of your workday. So what some people do, for example, is you can, for example, when you leave work, you can, as the very last thing, start a new build. And uh, if, the, if the new build fails, you can do some, some tricks which help, like, because if you, are, if you start a new build in your checkout and it fails, and you can, you can spend your, uh, your following working day just fixing the build, so 
you can do either a backup or what I use. I have two build directories and a symlink which points at the one which actually works. And I build in the new one and only when it builds correctly, I switch. Yeah, and um, I'm pretty sure that there can be more ugly or less ugly hacks. So if, if you have another interesting one, please share. I would like to learn something new too. It still takes a lot, lot of time. So maybe if you have questions or if you have some interesting, useful tricks I have missed. When you do ice cream, do all the machines need to be exactly the same operating system and version? Uh, no, ice cream is rather flexible. Uh, you can, uh, if, you, if you just install it on machines, you can even cross compile between 32 bit and 64 bit. I mean, it just, in just one direction. But it basically works that it packs a small environment of your build tools, sends it to the other machine, and runs it in a change route. So, like OpenSUSE to Fedora, that works. And if you do some manual work, you can even cross compile. So, for example, people working on Android use, use Ice Cream to build on actually fast machines in parallel and um, it, it, it works, it needs some manual work, but for, for the normal case, you just install ice cream, use enable ice cream, uh, make sure that at least one of the nodes is a scheduler, because you need a central point which distributes where to build and so on, and it just magically works. Yes? Was there an issue with Ubuntu? Last, I'm sorry? Last Hackfest we had an issue with Ubuntu, getting Ubuntu to work together with Fedora, they didn't. Due to different versions of ice cream, it didn't work that time. Uh, yeah, it occasionally happens. Uh, like two or three open source versions, there was a problem with some GLC compatibility with very old uh, SUSE versions. So some, somebody did a quick ugly hack which kind of changed the description of the architecture. And so basically, could could only distribute from the specific open source version to the specific open source version and the rest of the world rest of the world was a different version. But those those are rather uh, specific examples. I remember when I still worked on KDE, whenever we had a conference, uh, somebody just started a scheduler, the organizers provided some machines and everybody they had whatever distribution they had, and everybody just built on everybody else's machine. So, generally, it, it works. Yeah, you have a selective info in that it worked. I remember I checked in one of the last versions and it wasn't uh, working. Wasn't? Hmm. Is this working on my laptop, actually? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you can uh, actually do this thing, uh, you can do uh, build without any error mark and then uh, get in the model and uh, let's say... Ah, I have to do it in yes. the model, I have to mention, yes, I want to... Make clean that model and uh, debug equals t or something, there ah, is some okay. kind of thing. So. Yeah. Yeah, you can also you can also do debug info manually. If you if you run make debug uh, equals one or t or whatever, you you can build everything without debug info and ah. rebuild again in the module where you do need to debug info. It also works. Oh. <coughs> yeah. Uh, the last trick you mentioned, like uh, having two working directories and then switching when, when the new build is running. Mm -hmm. um, how do you uh, get um, get around the problem that you typically can move around your source tree because all the dependencies are absolutely possible? Yeah, that I have a build script which does this. What's that? Uh, it changes to the absolute path. So 
I have uh, L1 and L2 directories, which are the two builds, and I have L0 symlink, which points, points to the one uh, or, or to the second one. And this build script, uh, uh, I work in the L01 symlink, and when I run build, this just changes directory to L1 or L2, which are, whichever one is the one where it points to. Yeah, I, I, I first used it without it and I kind of noticed that it was magically updating files in one or other directory, so it's necess necessary to use uh, absolute path for the actual building. But I've been using this for, I don't know, two or, two or three years by now and it works fine. Okay, so 